and Nigeria, where most of the fruit, vegetables like tomatoes are grown commercially in the northern parts. Loss during transportation occurs especially on route southern markets. In the face of recent economic recession, therefore, where the prices of food crops have skyrocketed, many say these losses are unnecessary. One of the, the challenges is that most of the tomatoes are actually uh, planted during the dry season, so they use um, irrigation that is from the month of December and then harvesting begins somewhere in February, March, April, you know, all the way to around June. Um, and so also that poses a challenge because much of the tomatoes are coming in at the same time. So, uh, but we know there's some little tomatoes which are also planted during the rainy season, but I think for us um, the message is if you really have to make sure that there is consistent supply. Uh, farmers, have, farmers and um, farm organizations have to invest in greenhouse um, farming. Then that's one of the ways to make sure that you're supplying tomatoes throughout the year. So it doesn't depend on when there is rain or there is no rain. So that would be one of the solutions. However, last season, I think we saw quite a bit of change because in 2015, um, Tuta Absoluta um, came in and, and you know, destroyed a lot of crops. Uh, but this season, the farmers were able to improve their, their crops by staggering their, their production. That's also made uh, prices a little bit stable. So we are getting there, but for us to get there, really, we have to have a technological shift because the rain only comes at a specific time and the hot season also comes at a specific time. Yeah, we have to get to where Israel is, <laughs> planting throughout, <laughs> throughout the year. To tackle the problem of post-harvest loss, in Sub-Saharan Africa, the Rockefeller Foundation launched its YouthWise initiative in 2016. YouthWise aims to reduce waste throughout the food value chain, targeting cassava and tomato production in Nigeria, mangoes in Kenya, and maize in Tanzania, where collectively 70% of people make their living from agriculture. By reducing waste, the 470 million smallholder farmers in the region can directly feed more people. And really the motivation was uh, to, uh, Nigeria is one of the largest producers of tomatoes doing about 1.5 million metric tons a year. But the loss is so high, 50% of it never actually reaches the, um, the market uh, because it's lost either because of um, um, not so good transport system, lack of market and technologies, among many other uh, challenges. So we, we launched the initiative and uh, we are working in particular with in Kano, Kano State, uh, in partnership with uh, an, a non-government organization known as uh, Pixera Global, uh, who are implementing uh, together with us in Kano. So we are working with about, this year we were able to reach about 8,000 farmers. So we are trying to make sure that the farmers have a diversified market for their tomatoes. Yieldwise represents an innovative approach to agricultural development in which food that is already being grown gets to the people who need it. And smallholder farmers succeed in moving their crop from the fields to markets. Of course, the issue of infrastructure uh, if you build roads, then we can reduce the time it takes to evacuate uh, produce from rural areas to the urban areas. If you build markets, then we can improve the hygiene. Because if you go to some of the rural areas, they put their ways on the floor. You talked about diseases, okay? By putting them on the, on the ground, you're already increasing the danger of eating those things. But when you build markets and they're able to put them at least on the, on, on the slabs. <laughs> Key tools to accomplish this change include linking farmers to an ecosystem of buyers, linking value chain actors to finance, and training them in post-harvest laws, reduction techniques, and technologies. We are almost certain that uh, the middlemen can craft themselves in another way or redesign themselves, maybe become more organized buyers who are not just uh, exploiting the the smallholder farmers. I think is, is, is a better model and then uh, both the, the buyers and the, the farmers actually benefit more. Uh, but we understand of course in the past there has been uh, you know, a significant role of the, of the middleman. The middleman can also convert them into themselves into transporters because now the farmers are going to be more aware of what the prices are. Um, they are more aware in terms of where the market is. And, and I think for us that's the role that we need to play. 
food spoilage and waste account for annual losses of $310 billion in developing countries, where nearly 65% of lost food occurs at the production, processing and post-harvest stages. In sub-Saharan Africa alone, up to 150 kilograms of food produced is lost per person every year. Depending on the crop, between 15 and 35% of food may be lost before it even leaves the field.